guys, welcome to Freedom in a Budget. I am Kelly and it is Dumping Debt Friday time. So that means it is time to answer your questions and I'm so excited. I absolutely love these videos. So if you have a question for me, whether it be money related, weight loss related, personal related, whatever it may be, just ask it down below in the comments and I'll be sure to answer it in an upcoming video. So without further ado, First question is from my girl, Maria, Modern Budget Curl, and she said, what is one lesson you and Jamie want to pass on to your kids? And I think the, the number one thing is student loans. Number one, student loans are not required. You don't have to take out student loans. Um, you can do college without them. You can save ahead of time. You can work your way through college. Um, we're gonna be putting away money for our kids for college, and there's so many options other than student loans. And if they are taking out student loans, to fully understand them. I didn't have anyone that helped me with student loans. My mom passed away when I was 16. My dad knew nothing about them. And so I kind of went into it blindly. And um, the advisor at school was just kind of like, okay, sign here, sign here, sign here. I had no clue what it was. I had no clue that I was taking out more money than I actually needed to live on. Cause they said, oh yeah, you can take out, you know, an extra couple thousand dollars. And I was like, okay, sign me up. I had no clue what it meant to defer your loans. I had no clue that when you deferred your loans, you were still paying interest on them even though you weren't making payments, and my student loans almost doubled by the time that I ended up paying them off last um, March from when I actually took them out, which is just crazy. Um, another thing, out of state, I went to school out of state, and if I had lived in that state for six months, I could have paid in-state tuition. Instead, I paid out of state tuition, which was more expensive, so just little things like that um, of knowing what you're getting into. It is so important and such a change, game changer. All right, next question is from Mama Irwin, and she says, why a link of Capital One 360? Isn't that credit cards? How can a Dave Ramsey follower endorse Capital One? Not judging, just curious. So I actually laughed when I got this comment. Um, and this is a you know misconception a lot of people have. I've actually had a lot of people ask questions about this. In Capital One 360, they have three different um, components. They actually, I think they have more because they have loans and stuff. But they have credit cards, savings accounts, and checking accounts. Um, now credit cards, I do not use their credit cards but they have an incredible savings account um, interest rate. It is 1% right now, guys, which my um, Bank of America savings account, which is where I was used to be holding my um, my sinking funds was 0.01%. I was earning like a penny a month and it was so frustrating. And then Capital One 360, now I'm earning like three or $4. Now it's not much, but hey, I'll take you know, that three or four dollars, an extra 30 something dollars at the end of the year compared to my extra 12 cents. So it adds up. And they have a great, great um, new program with their sinking funds. Um, they, you can have multiple accounts like in your login. So you go log in, I'm logging in as Kelly, and I can see my um, emergency fund, I can see my car fund, repair fund, I can see my Christmas fund, I can see it all separated out, which is really cool. I personally don't do that, I have it all just bunch together and one I have it separate on my Excel sheet but if you want to do that that is so helpful for so many people of just being able to see what's going on and how how their money is being allocated um, it does take a couple days to transfer money from a typical account like Bank of America to um, Capital One 360 or vice versa if an emergency does come up but they do have a, um, a checking account that you can do direct transfers you can get a debit card a checking um, checks all of that if you want to do a checking account as well so I do have an referral a referral link um, that you sign up you get $25 I get $20 so that'll be listed down below in the description all right next question is from sensible living with money mom Kelly are there any areas Jamie is more frugal than you no honestly I, I thought about this long and hard I was like all right there has to be some things but he's 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 not very frugal and that's okay you know we balance each other out but he he's not frugal that's all i have to say about it all right next is from a facebook message that i just want to keep anonymous for her and it says my goal this year is to work towards my debt i bought dave ramsey's book and i'm fixing on fixing to start on baby step one the emergency fund i'm not able to start it just yet 
because due to losing my job and not being able to find a job for several months that paid when my previous one did, I struggled and got behind on my rent and other bills. My first question is, when you started paying off debt, were you able to get the companies to settle for less than what you owed? If so, how do you do it? So this is tough. Um, I honestly didn't do any settlements. When I paid off my student loans, I just paid the rest in full. Um, but if you are going to do this, you need to have a lump sum. You know, say you have $5,000 left on your student loans and you, they are calling you, they're harassing you. You call them and say, okay, you know what? I can pay 4,500. Can we call it even? Can we call it a deal? And they may say yes, they may say 4,700. It depends on something like that. But you can't just, you know, call and have $20,000 and say, okay, I want to pay you $100 a month, but let's just call it 15,000. So that you can't do, um, but some of them will negotiate at the end. But honestly, if you don't have that money, just keep paying your payments, do the debt snowball, roll them over. It's going to be the best way. You're going to you're gonna go a lot faster than you think you will, um, just because once you get the momentum, once you start paying up your first one, it's going to give you that high, that thrill, and you're going to want to keep going, keep going, and it's going to be so awesome. All right, next question. Oh, sensible living with money mom again and it says i have a question for next friday if i started a sinking fund for a car would you put that money in a money market account thanks kelly the reason i, I ask is the money could be a large amount so that's a great question i'm actually saving money for a car right now we're looking at getting a um my dream car my dave car my chevy equinox um we're gonna get it a couple years old and it's gonna be about twenty thousand dollars and you know i've got some slack for doing that but you know what, I've really wanted a Dave car and this is something that you know we're working hard for and we can't afford to save for it right now. So, hey, we're gonna do it. Um, but I would keep it in like a Capital One 360 account, like I mentioned before, something with a decent interest rate. Um, don't keep it just cash in your dresser or under your mattress or in your freezer. Definitely get a good um, account with a decent savings account rate. All right, last question is from Margaret C. She says, I'm 51 and actually never had a written budget. I've always tried to watch money and make sure I, we had savings. I was a stay-at-home mom, so we always had one income. We just paid off a $3,000 student loan. Awesome. We never expected to take out a student loan, but with two kids in college and seeing about 80 k a year to go pay for it, we did take it out, out the small loan. So now it's gone, and I have one other debt. That was a medical expense with 0% interest that will, will be paid off in May. It was a two-year interest-free loan of 45000 So my question is, wondering if I should take all those payments that will be available to hit the home mortgage with them. I would like to knock that out within three years. So let me read this. My question is now, wondering if I should take those payments that will now be available and hit the home mortgage with them. I would knock them out within three years. Okay. So what I would do is just follow the baby steps. I know it sounds basic. I know it sounds, you know, difficult. It just kind of like you're not going too far. But after you pay off the loans, um, pay them off, then do your emergency fund, your six month emergency fund, then do the house. Don't skip to the house. Don't take money payments from the house or anything like that. Um, don't, you know, steal Paul to, don't rob Paul to pay, or whatever that saying is um, just just stick with the baby steps and I know that it's difficult sometimes trust me I've been there but stick with the baby steps so pay off the debt then your emergency fund and then your um, your mortgage all right guys that is all the questions that I have for today if you have any questions for me please leave them down below in the description in the comments and I will be so excited to answer them in an upcoming video all right guys I will talk to you later bye